So welcome to another board game review from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at The Red Burnous, Algeria 1857, um, from a company called Hidden with a Shoe. Uh, this is and a, it's a play on words, the owner is Shoemaker. Yes, the so. owner of the company is called Matt Shoemaker. Yep. Yes. So this game uh, covers a very unique topic. Uh, mm -hmm. It's designed by Roberta Taylor and Matt Shoemaker, who owns the company. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a cooperative deck building uh, kind of dudes on a map style game. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's. And somewhat really a States of Siege style yes. game without being that way, right? There are. It's point to point movement. They're moving down these tracks or paths to get to you. Yeah, and so it's, there's some similarity there, but that's it. That's where it stops. Determined. There's a couple of choices where they might go, but yeah. you're trying to prepare for those things. So yeah. this is uh, a game that covers a conflict of the French occupation of Algeria and them fighting this particular group of people living in villages up in the mountains. The Berbers. Yes, the right. Berbers up in and it's like in like central Algeria, away from the coasts. Mm -hmm. So this is a conflict that. I frankly never heard of or, or, or knew anything about. So yeah. the rule book has uh, a couple of pages of really good kind of basic information. Yeah. And there's a bibliography in the back if that's something you wanted to learn more about. But uh, this is a game that I think, you know, it had been on Kickstarter. And yeah. You'd yeah. done an interview with... Them. No, no, I I had an opportunity. Okay. And I think we were just extremely busy. Okay. I know, and you, I, I felt you'd... bad. I couldn't do it. Well, you'd mention it to me. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of hadn't thought about it, and we just, we, I think you knew, but I, I didn't know. I, I knew it was at Gen Con. And I didn't, and then yeah. when we saw it, and you were like, oh, look, there it is. Yeah, and I, and I knew we would run into it eventually. I didn't know where. But they had it but, set up, and they were demoing it, mm -hmm. and it just looks really nice on the table. Oh, it's a beautiful game. And the production quality is really good. It uh, uses wood. It uses nice cards. The board's pretty cool. Yeah, the artwork on the cards is beautiful. The box, yeah. yeah, like, come on. It, it very much is like a board, you know, a, a typical Euro game that's well-produced. and Yeah, this has the components it, of a Euro yeah. game. I mean, it's it's a ward game, but it's more of a board game. Yeah, it's board game mechanics uh, Yeah, in, into a board game. Like, this is a deck builder. You have to build your deck. And it feels like a game. And 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 actually, frankly, it was really refreshing. Yes. It, uh, it wasn't a simulation. It wasn't, it wasn't trying to recreate history. We were trying to game the game and figure out how to beat it. Yes. And we, and we did, ultimately. We played twice. Because this is a co-op, and you play against an AI. Yeah, you're, you're playing together. And the AI is the French armies, and they're just building up armies and marching down the tracks mm -hmm. to come and get you. Uh, and if they start conquering you... <laughs> you it can end very quickly. Yes, you fold like a deck chair very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas you, as the Berbers, it's trying to... You know, it's you. You. It's yourselves, little partisans in the village. Your cards that you're playing. It's like a man or a, a woman. woman or a child. Yeah, right? and then it's like so you're trying to like get like sharpshooters and the mujahideen to come mm -hmm. to your villages to help defend. And you have weapon cards, and you're like hiding you're those yep. weapons in villages to yep. then use them later on. It's just. Really well, neat aspects of that that reflect the theme mm -hmm. while still being this is kind of a deck builder, right? Yeah, and I, it was it was a really nice marrying of those two things. Yeah, well, I, I think your your line of of thought there is is very spot on. the The concept of total war, right? Of everyone contributing. Oh yes. You know, I know in in Germany in World War II that was the concept, particularly near I think near the end. Yes, they tried to avoid doing that. Yeah, but. This is what you're fighting for your way of life. The Berbers are trying to protect themselves, their families, and and you can feel that in the game mechanics. You can also feel that in the narrative that is told with exactly what you're talking about. I'm I'm using a man to move cards in this village, and then I'm using a woman to provide this type of a support. Interestingly enough, the women mostly had food uh, icons on their cards, which yes. you need to buy your, your soldiers. <laughs> yeah, and your, you need to feed everyone. Yeah, you're, you have to feed them. So that was cool. So there were children, and they had a role. And I know that might sound sadistic and, and weird, no, but it... But what I, I really, I actually really liked that part of the game. I, I did too. Yeah, so the children and the youths, you play those, 
and those help you to draw more cards. Yes. And it's them going between villages. Communicating. And like little messengers. Yep. The, the men and the young men of the cards, those guys move Mujahideen and sharpshooters around. Yep. Say, oh, hey, we need them over there. Or like... The French are coming this way. It's kind of them yep. doing that. Uh, whereas the Mujahideen and the actual sharpshooter cards do the attacks. Mm -hmm. the, the local men of the villages are their guides, helping them to go to the right places and things like that. And the women, uh, they often have things where you can place women out and women can fight. They're a static yep. force, but it's very cool because you can arm them with weapons and get reroll mm -hmm. tokens and things. But uh, I think the elderly women, they can, you can play them into a village and move a card. They can yep. help to evacuate children out of a place mm -hmm. that you might then kind of uh, abandon. Uh, th there's really neat little nuances that you can use with them. Yeah. With how you move the cards around that you've put into villages as like reserves. It's, yeah. It's really it, it, cool. It is really fascinating and thematic and really... I think taught me something about this style of, I mean, really what you, it's guerrilla resistance, yes. right? That's what they were trying to do. They weren't overly armed, overly trained or professional military. They just, they use the land, they use the terrain, they use their villages and their resources, their people to try to, once again, to save their way of life. Yeah. I, very cool. The, and, and as you said, the mechanics, deck building, which you, you have some, abilities to purchase. You've got yep. a, an influence, you've got a military value, and then you've got a food, food and a tool value. or a, and, a, and, and a weapons as well. Yeah, and a weapons. Buying the one shop shoot. So you need, to, you need to go out into the marketplace and you need to assemble the correct cards to put into your deck to be able to ultimately to build defenses and to train and arm sharpshooters and mujahideen. And it's very interesting too because there's the basic part of life, food, sustenance you got to build your markets and your fig orchards and what was the other uh, uh what was, i can't remember what the other one was olive orchard olive orchard so you got to build those things all up and then use those cards in the right way to get the combinations you need to defend yourself so it it re very much feels like a game but a game based in historical reality and I really like that. Yeah, and you know, it's a, it's a. I got a bunch of cubes going off a bunch of French cubes, mm -hmm. and we're gonna chuck dice and, and get a little bucket of dice, and we're gonna roll back and forth till someone's totally dead. And if you go up against the French doing that, if they're in your village doing that, it's not gonna end well. Very risky. Yep. Uh, because if you capitulate, like it can be over. Yep. Um, whereas, so you're encouraged as to to do these ambushes. Hey, I've got my Mujahideen, I've got a couple of sharpshooters. Mm -hmm. You can kind of run out, do an ambush, do a little skirmish, and come back home. Yep. You, you're like, you have to do that. You will lose the game if you do not prepare to if do that. If you're not do consistently well. doing that, the French will just continue to march down the path and they will overrun and, you. And then you're fighting on their terms, yeah. which is very dangerous. Well, and, and the dice, it has custom dice, and they're very simple, uh, simple dice, really. They're white, blue, yellow, black brown and red. And they give you a bunch of them, and they're little 10 millimeter dice with yep. little explosions on them, or blanks. Or Real double simple. explosions. Oh, yes. Yep, so those are the three symbols. Most of the Mujahideen dice, they have three hits and three blanks. Yes. I think the yellow, which are your sharpshooters, have four hits and two blanks. And then the blues, it's four. Are those four or three? These are three uh, as well. Was it three? No, those are three, yeah. So it's three. But and like the uh, the red, black, and brown have double hits. Yes, and then usually a single hit. The calf only have a double. Yeah, hit. they only They've have got a double five hit. Five blanks and a double hit. But the artillery and the mujahideens, the women, have a double hit and a single, single hit. hit. And four blanks. So some yeah. of them are more swingy. So having a good volume, but also having different types can, can be helpful. Sense, yeah. And there's like a whole uh, CRT way. This is the order which you have to. Kill the Mujahideen before you kill any sharpshooters, yeah. right? They're the guys fighting in the front lines, the sharpshooters are up behind them. And so the way that you take losses is dictated this way as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you're and, trying and to manipulate your forces to give you a bit of both so yeah. you don't just lose everyone outright. Well, and that CRT or, or priority of elimination is also, you're trying to game that as well. Yeah. There are certain units, the sappers, they're good for nothing other than destroying your defenses that you build. So you know what? If you ambush, you're not fighting for shooting on those guys. You're shooting the 
the, the you're trying to kill the calves, the carabiners. Yeah, the carabiners. You're, that's who you're trying to take out because they're the ones that are combat effective. The sappers, they don't really do much. So no, they're not going to hurt you as bad on counterattacks, if at all. So going in and, and trying to ambush is very key, very important. But all of those elements add up to make it a game. And I then you throw in the reroll tokens, which yes. are obtained by playing certain... Mostly the women and the children into your villages. And the weapons, I think. The I think the weapons as well. You gain a reroll token, and you're using those because, oh, I just need one more hit. I'm going to reroll that one die. And, oh, I missed again. I'm going to reroll it again. And it just, it works, right? Because I think in my mind, I think of the narrative and the historical aspect. They're just, they're trying to use intelligence that they've yeah. found and the advantage of the, of the land and the terrain and... Yeah, they were more effective because they did that. They weren't out on the field fighting Napoleonic style no. in, a, in a straight formation because it never would have ended well for the for the Berbers. So we played this twice tonight. The first yep. time we kind of got, got crushed, obliterated. A lot of learning was going on of like, oh, <laughs> we should not have done what we did. Yeah, or we should have done these other things. Um, like I think in a two-player game, you play through. It's all of the French automata deck. Minus four cards, just take those out. I think it was 16 cards. 16. So there are 20 cards in that deck. Yes. And you take four out. And normally you play against 20. In a two player, you play against uh, 16 of them. Okay. Because otherwise, I think it's too difficult, or apparently. Yeah. Um, but the second game we played, we did really well. Uh, well, I think we, we figured the system out such that we were able to build what we needed to build and yes. move into the areas that we needed to move into. And we also understood how the different armies, what triggered them to muster. Yeah, and, and that's appear. when we talk about something, being able to game it, the game's mechanics are very straightforward. So it's mm -hmm. easy to see, hey, they're going to go down one of these two tracks. Okay, we're going to build up yeah. these two areas. They go down one, we jump everyone over there, we do an ambush. Kind of, you know, It's being able to see as much as you can before... You have to do it. Some of your leaders help you do those things where you yep. can actually like divine what the French are going to do, which is really nice. Well, that was the coolest thing about my deck that time is I had that leader that allowed me to look at the top two French cards, put one on the bottom and the other one back on the top. Now, you can't do that every turn because that leader card has to go into your deck. Yes. So you're going to get him about every four turns, maybe five turns. And, and those couple of early turns kind of useless yeah because he's th they're just building up not really marching yep. anywhere and that's that was the interesting part about both plays uh the first one that we lost they spend the first couple turns building up and then suddenly they're on the board knocking on your door and then we lost yeah at this one it was they spend the first couple turns building up then suddenly they're on your door except <laughs> we were ready yeah uh, and it was still tense, though. Oh, it was. Those, it came down to the last roll pro, several th times. That, that that kind of middle part of the game, we could very easily have lost. That would have been yep. over again very quickly. Yep. But we Agreed. did really well and utilized our resources much better. Defeated the French, and then we had, I feel like, the upper hand. Oh, yeah. Kind of going on, and we were able to build on that and yep. exploit their losses because you defeat the armies off the board. Well, you know where they're coming back on, mm -hmm. so we're going to defend those areas. And, you know, be ready to go to some of the other ones if things escalate quickly. Yeah. And so we were able to kind of really build on that. But it wasn't a walk, walk over the whole game. It was the same story, just a different yeah. outcome at the key point, basically. Because we, yeah. we'd rolled well, we'd planned much better and, uh, and used our resources in a much more interesting way. But it's also, it's, once again, it's like any game. You kind of figure the mechanics out you have to do and then you just... You try to do those, and, and you got to build up to it. One of the other cards that I really enjoyed, I think it was the Young Men, where you could play them to a village. Here it is, the Young Man. If you move a Muha, Mujahideen around to another person's village, so we started helping each other out. As you're supposed to. As this you're supposed to. <laughs> once you did that, if you moved it to another village, you got to go into your deck, your, your discard pile, put a card on top of your deck. So what card did I put on the top of my deck quite often? You'll put in weapons or... Uh, the weapon, a Mujahideen, or my leader uh, that helped me. I did that a couple of times. That's so nice. it, it really helped us. But once again, the, the thematic narrative of that concept is there's better communication back and forth. Yes. 
soldiers are going back saying, hey, they're weak here, or this is what you got to do. You learn how to defeat them, and you go back and you, you put it into action and you defeat them. When you work together as a community, you're more effective. Yeah, this I, game, two heads are better business. than one. I, yeah. And so <laughs> the last couple turns of this game that we won, it was kind of like, We'd won fairly resoundingly, and it was like, they kind of can't touch us at this point. Yeah. But, luckily for us, you, there's like hard mode that you can do for this game. Yeah. Where uh, the French go uh, like uh, just after every player instead oh, of boy. after both players. That would be extremely difficult, probably not unwinnable. However, yeah. you, <laughs> like, the game isn't just like, uh, we've kind of beat this game, put it on the shelf. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You can add that you difficulty. Can, you can, and there's, yeah. you can ramp it up another level after that as well. But, but once again, after two plays, we felt like we understood what we had to do. Yes. It's still a matter of getting that done. Yeah, oh yeah. And, and Some poor dice rolls yep. and poor card draws. Yep. And, we and you're still going to lose. So we had, even in that game that we dominated, there were a couple of times where I'm like, okay, we, we could lose this. And we just got the roll or we re-rolled to get the roll we needed. Yes. And... So, so it, it was tense, even though we yeah. did. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to play it again. And who knows, we'll get crushed the next time because we didn't get the cards out we needed or it didn't quite work together the way like, we ha we needed. That first ambush that I did, I used like four or five re-rolls in it to make yeah. it anything that was worthwhile. Yeah. And I still lost a Kai. Like it was... Yeah. It, yeah. I don't want anyone to get the impression that this was easy at a walkover. No, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's not what this is. actually very quite a challenging game and you've got to be canny and very good yeah and and a little bit of luck too well and but when we do cooperative games i think we've played enough of them together yes that i think we think through the system the mechanics the way it works what we're trying to do and and i think we we figure it out we we yes. we actually strategize well together and, and i think that's what this is about but i i don't think that's always going to be the case i do think there's some the other thing I do like about it is it can play up to four players. Yes. I think three players are controlling different villages. Yeah. With the fourth being the French, controlling the French. No, it's okay. not, which I think is weird. I don't know how it's divvied up with four. Okay, we you didn't just have look like into two that. villages each or something like that. Got it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> this was great at two players. I know plenty of people who have played it solo and enjoy yeah. it. Uh, I'd like to try it solo. Uh Three players would also be totally fine. Mm -hmm. Four players, I don't know. You start to maybe not do as much. They probably have right. more downtime. Right. But uh, with three players, I think it's designed to have three. With the way that the villages are divided into three different what is colors. It? it says four players, one to four, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I just haven't read the rules of how you divvy it up. But there's four players and an automaton, so that they don't control the Okay. French. Okay. But uh, yeah, it. Uh, before we waffle any longer, let me yeah, show yeah, yeah. you how it works. That way you have a better uh, idea of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. You see, this is a, this is a fairly small board, and this is a little point-to-point -point movement map set in the mountains. Um, there are nine villages on the board, and they're color-coded. So you've got these three green ones, and these blue ones and these brown ones, and they have corresponding cards. If you're playing three player, you're gonna divvy out, you know, each one of those colors to one person. In a two player, you kind of divvy them out north and south, and then this gets cut in half, so you share some of the blue ones. Let's get divvied out. Um, and in solo, you, you control all of them, but they don't interact. They're kind of three separate uh, entities, basically. Um, and then you have a starting hand of cards. You have 12 of them. And they represent kind of your initial villages. And so that's made up of people like young man or man, uh, woman, child, young woman, elderly man. So you start off with this kind of core deck of cards. And then to that, like a regular deck builder, these cards have a, kind of a, a worth that they can spend. And there's lots of different currencies on those cards. So this one, it looks like olives, that is influence. And you can purchase at the end of your turn cards for the cost. So to buy a fig orchard, it costs seven influence. So we've got two on this woman, two on this young woman, 
two on his child, two on his artisan. So you're going to have a, have a hand of five cards, and if you want to buy that fig orchard, you're going to you're trying to draw cards, you're trying to have saved cards over, and you can spend them to buy more cards into your hand. Uh, and you're doing that because you're buying more purchasing power at the tops of these other cards, or you're buying the abilities, or some of these cards will put cubes onto the board that will act as uh, kind of fighters and defenders. So, like kind of a regular deck builder, you start with this very basic deck, and you're going to buy cards, add to it, and you're cycling through that, and that's those have actions on them, and they put guys on the board, that's going to fuel what you do. So, kind of a, a normal deck builder like that, but just to show you the, the gorgeous, gorgeous artwork that they've got on these. It's really, really is, uh, is wonderful. Uh, I don't know, it was a joy to kind of play with this game, is what I would also say. But you also have these little villages that you're in control of. Again, there's little green ones, blue ones, and these kind of brownish ones. And you're kind of, it's a co-op, but you're kind of responsible mostly for this kind of section of the board. You will need to help each other out. However, um, there's, there is a limit to how much you can help other people. So you want to help where you can, but you also got to <laughs> take care of your responsibilities. Um, so everyone's going to kind of take a turn, and then the French are going to go. The French are controlled by this kind of AI deck. They flip over, and they have these three army holding boxes. They're going to fill these up, and then it says you deploy the army when there's six or more units present. It's real simple. Uh, if there's ever two or fewer, then that army retreats off the board. And there's three different armies, three different markers that go on the board. They also have these uh, secret uh, entrance markers that line up with these entrance. So that's the tracks they're going to come in on. And these are randomized at the beginning of the game, but they do not change during the game. And so when we talk about being able to um, manipulate the AI, not, maybe manipulate is not the right word, but you, they become slightly more, more predictable so that you can plan better for them. Um, otherwise it would be way too punishing if they just kind of popped up if and when uh, and it changed all the time. You'd never be able to kind of defend against that properly. So you're going to play cards, um, you're going to do what they say, uh, when, and then you can, you can do three actions. This little tiny little play here, uh, you can play a card to use its kind of written ability on it. And some of them say like, oh, uh, it's discard to do a thing. Or when you play it into a village, you get to do a thing. Uh, or um, you can reserve a chosen card where you put it into one of your villages. And that's important because it gets it both out of your hand and out of your deck, but also you can retrieve it later. Because the other part of reserve is you can retrieve all cards from one village. So you can either place a card and some cards have a trigger when you place them. So I'm going to reserve this youth card uh, for later on. So I'm going to put it in this village. And it lines up with this, because if ever this village gets invaded, um, that's this, the cards you have stacked in there can affect that. When you place this into a village, you draw three cards and discard one other. Cool. So I'm going to draw three extra cards. One, two, three. These get added to my hand. Now I've got two of my three actions left, so I can continue to do another two actions if I wanted to, or I might be looking, hey, I've accrued a certain amount of these, uh, uh, these kind of influence points and things that I want to spend later, so maybe I don't want to waste my cards doing actions because I want the buying power off of them. And again, this is most deck builders, you're, you're put in that decision space. Don't want to play the cards, or don't want to save them to purchase new cards. Uh, but let's just say we're going to uh, play some other cards out here, just to kind of say that we did it. Um, let's see. Well, none of those are particularly interesting. So we won't do any of those. We'll save these for buying power. So at this point, I've got four influence, and I've got four military power, and I've got at least one food. So I can spend these cards, I, and you do that by discarding them, to purchase this Mujahideen, and he goes into my deck, into my discard pile. Now, what's important is this guy has this little placement symbol. As soon as you purchase this, you get to place a Mujahideen out on the board. And where you put him, this is one of the few uh, choices that you have, you can place him anywhere on the map. So I can place him in one of my villages, you know, and it's a gamble at first. 
do I think if they come this way, this is the first village they'll meet, so I'm going to put them there. Or if they're coming this way, this would be the first village of mine that they would meet, they might go this way then. And so I could put them in one of these two, that's going to be kind of front line defense there. So we're going to put it right here. Um, but if you're in a pickle, you might add it to someone else's uh, if, if they were kind of really struggling. And if we knew that an army was coming this way, I might put them over there. So I put this guy out. That is a guy on the board who can roll dice and defend. Um, the Mujahideen card itself, if you ever play it alongside a weapons card, these guys can run out of the village and attack the French army. They ambush them. It's very strong, but you have to have both cards in your hand to be able to do it at the right time and there be an army there. So it can be a little bit tricky to make that go. But that's what a turn like, looks like. I'm going to draw another five cards in preparation for my next turn. Uh, and then the other player is going to do the same thing. And then the French are going to go. They're going to flip a, a card here. And this card's very simple. Uh, this card simply says you add four um, carabiners and you always add them to the lowest numbered undeployed army. So one, two, three. One is the lowest number and it's not deployed on the map. So we just add four to there. And then we check, we deploy when there's six or more cubes present, there's only four, and we check all the armies, they're all under their limits. This little blue triangle symbol, if there were armies deployed on the board, uh, and they were here, and he had a choice to either go to red or to blue, he would go to blue. Um, but in this instance, nothing happens. We're going to go a whole other round, we're going to do another turn, I'm going to play my five cards. And this is where you might start getting into, well, I want to retrieve this card as an action that I had saved later so that I could reuse it again uh, for its cool ability. Or I might say, well, I've got Mujahideen in my hand, but no weapons, so I can't do any ambushes. So I'm going to stick my Mujahideen in this village so that next turn, hopefully I draw a weapon, I have definitely am going to have a Mujahideen to be able to use that weapon. Uh, I might also then play this Mujahidate. I'm going to play this Mujahidate. We're going to play it right here. And the Mujahidate puts a Mujahidate out when you put it in a village. These are also defenders. They're going to roll the red die in combat, which has one single hit and one double hit and four blanks. However, these guys can't ever move. They can't ambush. Um, so those are a, a static defense. You kind of want to wait to place those based on when you where you know the armies are going to come out. And let's say that's what I'm going to do with my turn. Great. And then we kind of go again. Everyone else is going to do their turns. This is going to be happening over the board. And then it's the French's turn again. So the French are going to do a thing. They're going to add uh, two carabiners and a sapper to the lowest undeployed army. Great. They put those in. There's seven cubes in there. That's more than six. So this is now going to deploy. And they're going to deploy to this region down here. And they go into the they go into the little arrow box, um, so that, and then every army that's deployed on, on the map moves once, so it moves this little stopgap space. Again, um, if we had come to the crossroads or the T junction, they would go towards the blue one uh, if we were on that space, but we are not. And you're going to do this again and again, uh, and you're going to build up forces, and these <laughs> very large armies are going to encroach and encroach. And, you know, this one's very close to deploying. So now, the next French card that comes out, we're going to put out another sapper and two carabiners, and these are going to go on the lowest undeployed army. Well, this is already deployed. This is undeployed. Now this meets the eight-point threshold. So now this comes out, and is going to go up here, and now these are both going to move. And that's kind of... And now all of a sudden you're fighting twice as many forces, and this is very, very strong. So at this point, hopefully you've built up a couple extra forces. Maybe you were able to purchase another Mujahideen. Maybe you were able to get a sharpshooter out. Uh, and hopefully you have some kind of weapons kicking around so that you can use those. So one of the other actions that you can do on your turn is to do an ambush. So I'm going to firstly retrieve my Mujahideen. That's one of my actions. Then I've got a weapons and a, uh, and a Mujahideen now because I just retrieved it. And to, to ambush, you take all of your guys from a village you control, 
And as long as they have a clear path to an enemy army, so you can't go through other villages that other players control, uh, and you're going to do an ambush. So an ambush is simply, I'm going to roll two white die and a yellow die, because that's what I've got, and every hit I score is going to remove one of the cubes from this army. So I rolled very poorly. Uh, that is three blanks. But hopefully uh, you have accrued some of these re-roll tokens, which are very, very, very important, and you have to have them. <laughs> uh, you'll start the game with a couple, depending on uh, some of the villagers provide those. So let's say I, I use a re-roll token. I can re-roll one of these. The yellow... <laughs> and this happens a lot. Let's use another one. Oh! Great, I scored one hit. And maybe I'll use my last one just as a... Hey! So... I've used up all my resources for re-rolls, but I scored two hits. Normally, when you score hits, you have to follow this procedure for unit removal. So we'd have to normally kill the cav first. Um, then we would kill any blue carabiners, then any artillery, then any sappers. Uh, in this instance, whenever you, when you're doing the ambush, e.g., you know, it's your initiative, uh, you can choose any of these to remove that you wish. And that is very different from when the French move into your village and attack you. You have to follow uh, this procedure of who dies first. So we're going to actually kill the two uh, horses because the horses don't hit as regularly, but they have the double hit, and for me that is, it's so risky, it's so dangerous. And then what's going to happen is uh, they are going to attack back. They do a little counterattack, and they roll um, either the number of cubes they have left, or uh, half of what we rolled rounded up, um, whichever is lowest. So they're going to roll half of what we rolled rounded up, which is two, and again they follow the priority. So there's no brown cavalry left, but they do have a couple blue, so they're going to roll two blue dice at us. And luckily they both missed. They don't have the reroll tokens, so uh, that was very fortuitous. And then our guys just kind of slink back here. So we've done a couple damage to them and kind of live to fight another day. That's very, very, very good. And why this is kind of thing is important is because I'm going to do that, maybe these guys are going to go out and do that, because if we can ever get them to three or fewer, let's see, oh, let's kill, if we ever do another successful one, we get three or fewer, this army simply retreats off the map, and they are no longer threatening us immediately. Now, They'll start filling up again with this. Hey, they're going to get another two sappers and a, a carabiner. So that they're going to build up their forces and they're going to come at us again eventually. But it delays that. And the aim of the game is to get through the deck of AI cards and, and to not have been conquered. Uh, so when, when the French move into your village, let's say they made it all the way in. Let's bring our Mujahideen over. Um, you just fight like a pitched battle. Um, if there were any artillery or, or sharpshooters, those guys shoot first before any other combats are rolled, and then you roll all your regular troops. So if you have any artillery, any cavalry, um, you shoot before the French, which is nice. So let's say we've got uh, two whites and a red and a yellow. You're going to roll to do your hits, kill a couple of their guys, following again unit removal has to be based on this if you're in this kind of a pitched battle. Then they attack you back, doing a couple hits. You can spend a reroll to force the AI to reroll. Uh, so, and you keep going back and forth, back and forth until one side is dead. If you lose this combat uh, and everything is removed, um, you become conquered and you're done and you're out of the game. So don't let that happen. You have to, which, emph it, like, emphasizes the importance of going out and ambushing, whittling their forces down so that when they actually come into your village, they're very, very weak, if, if they even get that far. Ideally, you want to kill them out uh, before they get to your settlement. So. But you, you just go, keep going through the cycles. You're building up your forces, building your deck, getting your economy going to build and buy sharpshooters, mujahideen, to put those cubes out, using those as expeditionary forces to go and do ambushes and keeping them at bay. Because the thing now is, is that the French tactics become slightly more predictable. So we know if we defeat this army here, they were down here, but they will, so let's say we force them to retreat, great. 
They're going to build up their forces again, but we know they're coming back here. So I'm definitely moving some defenders down here in preparation. If we can defeat these guys as well and get them off the board, we know that these guys have to come out and build up first before Army 3 up here ever comes on the board. So being able to fight on your terms by keeping the French on the back foot really pays dividends in this game. But generally speaking, that's how this works. It is not a complicated game by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, beautiful components, as you can see. It's a little bit messy on the table for us, uh, but uh, what we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Very nice map. No, no Gorgeous doubt. components. Yep. It was beautiful to play with. Mm -hmm. I always like playing board games because I'm always reminded that uh, there's a really great production value out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I well, get bored of cardboard games. War games can be beautiful too, they can, right? They can. They can. They're not always beautiful, though. We're just, we're just not there yet. Now, yeah, we're getting there. Someone might call this a war game. And and, and I actually think it yeah. is a war game, but it has a lot of board game mechanics. Yeah. And, and I don't think that's a bad thing. No. It's a crossover. Yeah. That's what I think. Very similar to something like um, Undaunted Normandy. Or, or like, Time of Crisis. Yeah. You know, it's a deck builder mm -hmm. that fuels... This is kind of a point-to-point -point dudes on a map. Yep. Bucket or dice war game. Yep. Is it a massive, heavy, crunchy game? No. No. Do you have combat factors? No. But is there tactics to consider in who and what you destroy with your ambush Absolutely. results? Yes. Yeah. And how and, when you do that and managing yep. your resources, it's great. And how to work together. The, the other thing, we didn't talk a whole lot about the game. I do like that, that there's a lot of different ways to go about the defense, right? You've got... Oh, yeah. Defenses you can build, like I assume it's like walls. Yeah, and, like static. Oh, we dug some yeah. ditches and trenches whatever, or walls and stuff. You can do those. They're expensive as heck to do. Oh, yeah, they are. And they go away really easy from those sappers, those guys that we like because they don't have combat dice. Yes. They're literally just engineers running around with no weapons. That's basically what <laughs> yes, they got spades. Peels and shovels. Yeah. <laughs> but you can you can focus on that. You can focus on getting the Mujahadate. The I, I believe they're women. Yep, yep. It's, it's yep. the women of the village who so, are armed with yep. weapons. So they are they're the red Bernouses, I believe. Yes. They're, right? they're, they they got the little red cubes. They yep. I believe that's why it's named the red Bernous because the Bernouses that they'd wear, or the Benice, <laughs> that's not a word. Right, that right. They would wear were red mm -hmm. uh, as they were defending their villages. But you can focus on those, and and if you look at the that side of the map where I was sitting, man, I got a ton of those out. And now there's a limited number of them. Yes, and it's you have to wait to play them. Yes. To know where Because the you is. can't move them. No. You can't remobilize them. Once they're killed, they're out of the game. Yes. So, so they are key to really, okay, we knew they were gonna be coming to that side because of the way- Yeah, the army like, marches what? down there. Yep. They're gonna keep coming down there. That's why we're gonna load up with those guys. But I, I, I like that that you can also win in that way, in some ways. They have a little better dice. They're the dice that hit, I think, only on two sides, but one of them has a double hit. Yeah. So they, it's kind of a poison pill. They can be very good, though. I never read a, rolled a double with them. I always you did, roll, oh, you did. I, I, and I just rolled a double yes. when I said that. One time you did. One time I did, you're right. And it actually forced the army to retreat. Yes, and it was like, yep. oh, amazing. Yeah, so that was cool. Yes. But, but I do like that. You can do the static defenses. You can do the Red Bernoose, uh style defense. You also, we kind of agglomerated a whole bunch of dudes here, you, you know, sharpshooters and Mujahideen. This is the biggest force I've ever seen in a guerrilla war. Yes. Right? And this is this is an army. This is crazy. But we'd spent all of our cards and stuff. Focusing them on there that. It was so that they would just run out and just waste the yeah. French armies coming in. It was great. And it, it just to me, there's a lot of different ways you can play it. Yes. Also, learning to play the market is very interesting, it's I think. Very difficult. So It in, is very difficult. In, in many um, deck builders, you have one currency, or at most, mm -hmm. two. This one, you this have one, three you have or five. four or five. <laughs> now, some yeah. of them are minor, but uh, you, it's impossible, almost, especially towards the late game, to yeah. have a useful hand of cards to purchase with. Because you should be stacking your villagers who have a lot of currency in your villages. And, and So you're not using them for that. The sheer volume of your deck means you're less likely to get yep. the concentrations of things to buy some of the really good stuff. Agreed. And so it's, I've got my hand of cards, and then you're like, I'm going to pick up this stack from this village mm -hmm. to 
to to kind of uh, what do you to augment that? Yep. And then, and then I buy stuff. Yeah. And that's all going away, and I got to kind of invest in mm -hmm. putting my stores and reserves. But back. then when you pick those guys up off that village and you spend them that way, they go back into your deck, making it thicker, right? Making it harder to get your good stuff. So that, like any good deck building game, it's about managing that deck. Yeah. Keeping it to a manageable level, getting the cards that are less useful out of the deck. This has no discard or, or destroy mechanic, but the way you destroy them or discard them is you place them on your villages. Yeah, you're, you're, and that's you're, cool. you're sticking them out in your villages and then they don't clog you up until you're yeah. ready to use them. But you're, you got to manage that aspect too. So you really got, I mean, you got to manage your forces. You got to manage your marketplace. You got to manage your villages. You got to work together. And I think that first game that we got destroyed in, we, we weren't doing those things very well. No. And, at all. And that's that's the maybe the only thing that I would say about this. I enjoy playing this two-player because mm -hmm. it, uh, every hand was kind of had to inspect my hand and figure out what on earth I was going to do yeah. with it. Because there's a lot of different currencies, mm -hmm. and then you've got the texts on them, and then it's like, what do I have out here? Yeah. So if you play this with a four, you're going to have a, a fair amount of downtime, I think. Maybe. Well, and the other interesting thing, too, is the thing that fuels your guerrilla warfare is not your Mujahideen and your sharpshooters. It's weapons. Yeah, without weapons, your guys yeah, are they're just worthless. guys. So... There are not a lot of weapons in this in this game. I think there may be ten or twelve. If that might be eight. And I, I mean, you need at least three in your deck with four or five guys to be effective. That's a good bal it's a balance. So I worry with three players or even four. Because you're not adding weapons. You're going to be strapped for resources and be yeah. like, please don't buy this, I'd like to buy one. Right, and, and that's a different level of communication. Yeah. That's a different level of cooperation. I, I remember one time I said, do you have enough weapons? Can I buy this last weapon? Yes. And that's another part of the game. It's another aspect of the game that makes it a great cooperative. Agreed. And and, and I thought that was interesting because I think the first game, we didn't, we didn't get some of those finer... The nuance. The yeah. nuance of the game. I think now after two plays, we're starting to get that. I'd love to play this again because, yeah. one, it was fun. And it didn't take very long. No, for 40 to 45 minutes. What's it say on the box? They say 60 to 90 minutes. I, I would agree with that. 45 minutes to, to an hour, I think, yeah. once you get You can down. lose much quicker than that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I, I had a good time. It was interesting. It kept my attention. I thought it told a fantastic narrative and really a different side of warfare. We've played a lot of guerrilla style insurgency games, but not to this granular level. Yes. The level of granularity in what the cards represent and how they is function. Unprecedented. It's really, really. nice. Like I, mean, I really, really liked that aspect. Well, of once it. again, a child card. I, I mean the, the, How many games the are you... performs a function within the villages. And a vital function. And that makes some sense. As well. Yeah. It's not just like, here's an effect that we've put yeah. on a card. It, it, you're like, yeah, sure. Yep. I could totally believe that that's the role that they would play. It, you know, woman, young man, elderly man, youth. Even the youth was very important. Um, what was the other one? The uh, young women, elderly man, and elderly woman. They all had a key function... Yeah. And it was just so interesting because we've played a lot of coin series games. Yeah. Coin series games are about revolution, insurgency, fighting against the government, stamping out the fires. But I've never had a card that talks about children yeah. and their role in these, or in it's these like wars. Or one card in a whole game. Yeah. This is... It's a, a lot of cards. Those are at such a high level. Yeah. This is at such a small level at times, even though... The French army is like 25,000 dudes. Yeah. What you're doing in your little villages with your little resistors. It's oh, fascinating. Just great. It, it really it really is. I'm so glad that we got yeah. this. Yeah. Well, and I would like to, I think, express to them what a cool concept. Yes. What an interesting piece of history to bring to a game. And bravo on making it a very interesting, engaging, fun to beautiful game. play. Beautiful. I. This is really a home run with their first game. We've but, had a couple publishers and the last. This is not even their first game. Oh, it's okay. Maybe the first game that I'm aware of. Well, they had like a a, a game about bees. This well, is, this is a okay. board game company, right? Yes. That, like they have they have a game about bees and beehives and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. 
this is not my style of game. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But but like it but. was that and this at their booth. It could not have been. You're right. I two remember seeing more yep. different sides of of, of but, gaming. Please, Matt, and it's her name, Roberta. Roberta. P- please do another historical oh. game. Uh, you, uh, bees you, are great. Bees are fantastic. Bees, in fact, make our world possible. I love bees. I love bees. Not when they sting me, but I love them. But please find another historical topic the, to make a cool game. You've nailed like this. this. Yeah. So continue e- to do it, either, please. Either more of this, or what's the next thing? Yeah. What's another piece of history that we can do? Yeah. Because uh, I would trust them now. Yeah, I had a really good time playing this. I would recommend this to anybody. I, this I is a game that anyone can co-op. play. We, I do. We play a lot of co-ops on yep. our off time. Well, and we play those co-ops with our father-in-law. Yeah. Our, we played one on Sunday before Labor Day. We played yes. a, a dungeon crawling. Yes. And it was fantastic. But it's that concept of how do we work together? How do we strategize? And I love that part of and, these and games. And it's rare that we do... Co-ops wearing these shirts. Oh, very rare. Right? Like it's like. Have we ever done a co-op wearing this? Warfighter. Shirts? Okay, and, that's a good. Uh, that's a good Hades, example. Right, but like that's it. Exactly. And so more I, often than not, we're trying to beat each other's brains yeah, out. Yeah, which is totally fine. Yeah. But I also appreciate the opportunity to do this stuff yes. together. Oh, I'm giving you my guy. You yeah. give me my mech. And then I'm going to give it to you again, like tossing guys back and forth for defenders. Couldn't we even play it on someone else's village? Yeah. So we did that once or twice, you but can't, not often. You can't play cards on other people's villages. Okay, okay. But when you buy your Mujahideen, you can put, put that them, cube anywhere. And that was, I remember in our first game, I did too much of that. I think I should have kept a few more of those on my side, because that's where we were getting attacked. But I was trying to help you because I knew it was coming for you, too. Yeah. It, but yeah, that's so cool. That, that's what cooperatives are about. And... Once again, back to the comment we were making. Please make another game. Yes. Not like this. Let's let's go somewhere else. But but I, if it was, I wouldn't be. But mad. yeah, I mean, if you found another conflict that would work and work with this set of mechanics, please. But try this. Do yourself a favor. Try this game out. I think we bought this for was it sixty dollars? Sixty or sixty five, something yeah. like that. I, I thought it's a great value. It's a very cool little game. Yeah. It, very su- well produced. You're supporting a small publisher. Yep. You've got. Beautiful components. Yep. This is much nicer components than that you would, yeah. <laughs> that you would pay for in some other games. Yeah. And fantastic. And a nice light game that you could play with your family. You yeah. can play this with basically anyone. You say, "Oh, I got this really nice new deck builder." Yeah. You've lied to them, but yeah, right. They're playing the war game with you now, so exactly. They're in it, it for the matter. long haul. Great game. So, I really enjoyed this. The Red Banus, Algeria, eighteen fifty-seven, from Hit 'Em with a Shoe. Uh, Check it out if you're interested. Appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from ThePlayersAid.com. And I'm Grant.